add value to your business or do you want to just be this administrative person? And often if you look at your talent team and the caliber of talent in your company, they correlate. You could hire the best person for the job if they were in your candidate pool. All these individual employees, one by one by one, together, their voices all come together to articulate the culture of the company. Today we view the candidate as the customer, right? And I think organizations that don't are missing it. What does it mean when the candidate becomes the customer? And also talking about change and how that impacts everything about recruiting. That and plenty more coming up on this episode of Hiring on All Cylinders. And we are back. This is Sean Simmerly, your host of Hiring on All Cylinders. We're in the cozy confines of the studio, uh, aptly named, I would say, uh, here at the Village on Market Street at the inaugural Recruiting Automation Summit. Uh, we've had a bunch of different guests come in through these doors. We've covered topics ranging from diversity to efficiency to AI to all of these buzzwords that seem to be so prevalent in our talent acquisition space. But for this next conversation, we're going to talk about another topic, which is change management. And to do that, we have two phenomenal speakers from the RAS lineup here. To my left, we have LaDonna Tucker. LaDonna is leading the Global Center of Excellence covering process and technology for Schneider Electric. Uh, LaDonna, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, absolutely. And then across from me is NN Srinivas, who is the head of management recruitment at Cognizant Technology Solutions. And then, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Beautiful. So you both are on a panel, or we're on a panel, about change management, right? Yep. Okay. So for our listeners that might be like, what is change management? Could one of you kind of give me a quick synopsis of what change management really means kind of as it relates to recruiting? And both of them look at each other like, <laughs> uh, you. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe I'll go first. Okay. I think what is change, what is change management? In my view, change management is the process of predicting a business technology shift towards which, uh, at least from a recruiting standpoint, I have to now shift gears uh, to adapt to a new playbook, to a new reality in terms of how I will look at and evaluate candidates coming through the doors. So uh, quite simply, that in itself is change management and all that it encompasses uh, from a narrative, tools, technology, systems, people management, behaviors we drive and recognize through to the overall candidate onboarding experience. So um, so that uh, is how I'll summarize what is change management. It's a very tough, open question to start with. Yeah, I mean, we might as well start with a tough one, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think just generally speaking, I mean, to me, change management is just how we guide uh, people um, in our organization through a change that we're implementing um, mm. to hopefully have successful, successful buy-in, uh, adoption of whatever the change is. Um, a lot focused on communication, right? It's essentially a communication plan yeah. uh, and how you're guiding people through uh, whatever those feelings or thoughts, opinions are of that change, how you get them to the other side. Absolutely. And I mean, I feel like it is uh, even more prevalent than ever now. I mean, given the like rate of new technologies, mm -hmm. of differences in ideas around diversity and you know organizational development and learning and development, it feels like every week there's a new development, new change that people are trying to adapt to. Yeah, I mean, I, to me right now, I think it's an exciting time in talent acquisition. There's, there's a lot of uh, change. It's very dynamic. It's very fast moving. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about, um, you know, where things were a year ago. I mean, there's technologies and things that didn't exist and yeah. then new features and, and it's just almost overwhelming. And so I think that's part of the challenge, right, is um, we often hear from our recruiters, there's just too much, sure. uh, too many tools uh, to work in, yeah. but they're each solving for something, right? And it's yeah. how do we manage the expectations of the team and take that feedback and figure out how much change can they absorb? Yeah. And, um, and I think that's kind of an ongoing leadership challenge, right? Is uh, figuring out what's that right balance and, and how much can people take at any given time? Sure. Yeah. I, think, I think just to sort of um, extend LaDonna's point, right? I think she's right. I think this is a very interesting phase of what's going on uh, in terms of talent acquisition and how the marketplace is redefining talent acquisition. A lot of things that we're speaking about and the way you started even the podcast in terms of you know, uh, diversity and inclusion and uh, the social media, et cetera. I think a lot of these, uh, the taxonomy of a lot of these is being laid out, written down as we go through that. 
uh, I think future generations of future generations of recruiting leaders will look back at these times as a reference point at some level, uh, mostly because I think they have never been so important. Mm -hmm. They have never been um, spoken about consistently over an extended period of time, um, at least not to my knowledge um, till recently. And I think these conversations are important. Uh, but what, I, in my personal view, and I say this with my personal experience, is yes, I think diversity and inclusion is important. Uh, but a lot of people, want, in my view, uh, you know, miss diversity, and, uh, or rather confuse diversity and inclusion uh, for only diversity, uh, mm -hmm. whereas inclusion is the bigger part. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, a, as we get along this journey, um, uh, for us, the recruiting playbook fundamentally has shifted. Um, there is a generation of recruiters uh, which now has to change and evolve. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, you know, and there is that fundamental underscore shift, if you will, right? So, uh, which uh, some of us will make through, some of us will break through. I mean, I still remember the times when my dad used to tell me that I have to upload a resume. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't even, <laughs> I can't even think of putting upload and resume in a sentence any longer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I it's, it's, it's recent history too. So yeah. in terms of when you look at things, so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, when you think about why is it very dynamic right now, I think it's because uh, candidates have redefined who the customer is. Sure. And you know, I mean, that wasn't, uh, today we view the candidate as the customer, yeah. right? And I think organizations that don't are missing it. Mm -hmm. um, once upon a time, it was the manager, maybe yeah. even HR, you know, that has changed. And candidates have defined that they are our customer. Um, we see it in the marketplace, right? I mean, we're so used to things being on demand, it's yep. easy to get. Uh, Be able to review. Right, like, we have mm -hmm. high expectations of what we expect as a consumer. And I think it's translating into uh, the candidate experience, right? And so I think this is where technology has come in and is trying to solve for that because, sure. you know, as organizations are seeing more and more of these problems of, you know, we're having a supply shortage of talent. Uh, we've got uh, higher demands from the candidate of how, um, how we accommodate their experience going yeah. through our process. And so uh, change is, is, is required, right? I mean, we, we can't kind of be the recruiting organizations we were five, 10 years ago. We have to be present today uh, and, and essentially accommodate what those candidate needs are while still getting our organizational needs met by finding great talent. I think it's a, it's a challenge I know for us mm -hmm. um, thinking about how do we transform our candidate experience and that's where technology has kind of come in to help us start to solve for some of that, you know, and then we have the, the recruiter who's still changing their paradigm. Yep. And, you know, they're still working with hiring managers. They're still working with people in HR. And, and so it's that shift in their own thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we'll eventually catch up to, you know, the value of technology. It's not just another tool. It's something kind of solving for uh, that candidate experience. And yeah. when we think about diversity in the mix of that, right, this is also partially driven, I think, by uh, society today. You know, in the U.S., we talk about, you know, Me Too, Time's Up, you know, yep. and, and today, I mean, there's a voice that didn't exist on the topic of diversity even five years ago. You know, yeah. I think we can say it was important, but no one was really yeah, talking was no about it. There was no taxonomy of it. There was no definition. Yeah, it could, no it could, it was one was really talking about interpretation. it. Interpretation, yeah. And, yeah. and it's interesting to see in the past even 12 months yeah. what has occurred even through the influence of Hollywood, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of standing up and saying something different. And it doesn't cover everything, right? But um, it, it's certainly giving a voice to people who really haven't spoken up before. Yeah. And I think it's reflected in the candidate experience yeah. too, right? Because mm -hmm. now candidates are speaking up in a way we haven't heard them speak up before yeah. saying, you know, you need to treat me different. Exactly. You know, I have expectations yeah. and you- They need to be met. They need yeah. to be met. Exactly. I think, you know, I think uh, in a way, if I have to bottom line it, right? I think the, there is a paradigm in the sense that we are trying to manage a perception based on a social yes. uh, digital footprint, yeah. right? Um, uh, that's a perception we, we don't entirely control, but we still are, are in a place where we have to influence it and get the right people. So there is that added nuance of uh, sometimes changing the perception uh, which these people have developed uh, or our target population has developed whatever digital footprint we've left. Um, 
or adapting to it. Um, and that kind of paradigm a, a generation ago, or, or maybe even a five years ago, uh, a recruiting organization would never think of. Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, even five years ago, um, the impact of social media, I don't think we were really feeling it at that point. No. And, and now, uh, is very relevant, is very much in the minds of organizations because essentially uh, that experience that's provided uh, to the candidate, whether or not it meets their expectations, really has a, an impact on your business, yeah. right? It has a financial impact potentially on your business and their experience or perception is your brand. Yeah. And, you know, and so we've, uh, we're in this interesting place now where we've got to try to manage uh, those expectations. Mm -hmm. We've got to almost over communicate uh, with talent and yet talent acquisition organizations to, to work through all of this, we haven't necessarily been given more resources, nope. you know, more budget, <laughs> you know, these things haven't necessarily changed for us, but yet we have a dilemma that we've got to solve for. And, you know, what we see in our organization kind of shifting is our relationship with marketing. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that shifting, uh, thinking about technology and the relationship and partnership we have within uh, our organizations with that uh, sure. group. And, and so there's a lot of things that we're thinking about and, and moving into conversation that I would think, you know, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, um, would I be worried about somebody posting something about our company online? I wouldn't have really, you know, no, I, I wouldn't all. have really thought about it. But today, I mean, we know that not only are they going to post something, I mean, that's inevitable. It's our employees, it's candidates. Uh, we have to respond, yep. you know, and we have to sometimes do more than just say something in response. We have to do something in response. So it's really um, uh, the voice of talent, the voice of employees, it's really driving action. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's a, a dynamic shift we've seen really probably in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, what it comes down to, and what I'm getting is that a lot of this has to resolve or re uh, revolve around communication and being overly communicative throughout these changes and as things continue to evolve. And so is that part of kind of avoiding that fatigue, as you guys were mentioning, of like, oh, there's just so much technology, there's so much change. Like, how do we avoid that fatigue? Is it through just communicating this is a process of change? Or how do we make sure that people are marching towards that eventual like marriage of, you know, change and process in different departments? How do we make sure that we get there as opposed to just over encumber ourselves with technology yeah that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> so i think the 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 i think for internally i think the way i would uh, sort of break down your question is just two parts right i think there is an internal aspect to it and there is an external aspect to it internally i think for i think the challenge for people like myself ladona is to make sure the teams stay nimble mm -hmm. right uh, they don't have this perception of uh, hierarchy and you know layers and all of that they are they are they are in the same sort of an environment if you will uh, that the candidates they're trying to hire mm -hmm. and that in complex organizations is always not easy and it's it's a tightrope walk for that talent acquisition leader um, you know uh, in this case the two of us and there are not many right answers right uh, there are a lot of wrong answers uh, but I think the, the, the test of the leader will be to how fast that person is able to learn uh, from a lot of those wrong answers, right? I, I don't think wrong answers is necessarily bad, but, um, but to demonstrate that agility, to shift, um, you know, to adjust to a certain business need or requirement is very important. Um, externally, uh, I think the candidates uh, at some level either through overexposure of social media or 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 too much content on from their smartphones from the time you wake up right from the yeah. smartphones to uh, what's your uh, feed look like uh, what are the things that you go through even before you, your feet are on the floor you know it's already you're already your mood is made your your day is sort of the tone of your day is set uh, and from that point on uh, you know the re as long as you're able to manage that perception um, we're as long as we're able to um, uh, create an environment where the candidate comes with whatever background or whatever perceptions that they are is now looking at uh, an aha moment or something that will wow them because of this excessive media uh, in their lives uh, is brought to some sort of a reality check in terms of listen there is always going to be dissonance in terms of what uh, you would like 
and what you'll end up doing. Uh, and we've heard a lot of those speakers talk about it, uh, the cognitive dissonance, right? Um, uh, and th how they narrate that uh, gap, uh, saying that, yes, I know you're looking at co uh, any firm um, that, you know, if, when I say Amazon or Microsoft or any of these big names, there is a certain impression that hits my mind. And how do I bridge that gap uh, in terms of when I say Cognizant or when I say Schneider, uh, the narrative that an individual recruiter will take to that candidate, I think, will make the difference. And I think those are the recruiters LaDonna and I uh, respect, worship, and hope never quit, right? Mm. So, Yeah, well, I, I think about, um, you know, we at least in our organization, we're talking about digital profiles. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a, a common thing yeah. amongst mm -hmm. organizations now. And, and really, when you get to the core of what do we mean when we say a digital profile, it's not somebody who has an iPhone or knows how to use a computer, right? Mm -hmm. It's agility, essentially, yeah. right? Because we're talking about, you know, transformation across organizations, right? It's yeah. a digital transformation. It's an HR transformation. There's transformation everywhere. And, and essentially, we're saying we're trying to become more of an agile organization organization, right, to uh, be able to shift quickly and, and pivot when uh, demand requires it. And I think, um, you know, thinking about your question to how do we really help our teams through this, it's, it's finding the right team members that sure. are digital profiles, that are agile, that yeah. can pivot quickly and want to go on that journey. You know, not everyone will do it yeah. uh, and not everyone will be successful at it, but I honestly think that... Um, those recruiters eventually will probably get frustrated and leave our organization. Sure. And, you know, probably for the health of the organization, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think in the past, we maybe always viewed it as, you know, people leaving is just such a, a terrible negative, thing. Yeah. But uh, as we're, as organizations are maturing and growing, I think there's that breaking point where it's, maybe it's not a fit anymore and that's okay. Sure. Uh, and we have to be okay with letting people move on to what the next phase of their life is that's maybe a better fit. Uh, and as we transform, we've got to be thinking about who are the right people that are going to help uh, facilitate that journey um, because it, it has to be one that um, is based at the core around just pure agility, mm, that yeah. what's working today um, works for today. And I understand that. But if we need to pivot tomorrow, I'm ready, willing and able to do so. Yeah. And I think it also works backwards. I think it's very really important for us to talk a little bit about the candidate himself or herself. Right. I think it's. Uh, every candidate out there should also be very cautious and at the same time very sensitive to what is the perception or the digital footprint they themselves are leaving, mm -hmm. um, right? Or what is the persona, yeah. right? Uh, to LaDonna's point, I think all of us will are a few short years away from a persona-based hiring because nobody wants attrition, nobody wants uh, recruiting costs to go up. Um, and with the sort of pressure that's on the talent pool right now, uh, there is there is more demand than uh, that there is talent available. I think it's very important for every candidate to be very sensitive to what is the uh, persona that they are leaving uh, and what does it say about them. And, uh, and quite honestly, uh, what should it say about them? I think they should be actively influencing it as opposed to just uh, letting it evolve. Mm. Uh, so that when you know the donors or mine uh, teams go out into the market, we know what we are looking for and we know what we're dealing with. Mm. Uh, and and that makes it a two-way street uh, from a transparency point of view. And I think the opportunities of cognitive dissonance or I made the wrong choice or, you know, situations like that are more easily thwarted at a much more earlier stage than well later into the process when all of us have burned cycle times uh, some some last as much as 90 to 100 days. Mm. Um, and it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth, right? So sure. you just want to avoid it as yeah. such. Mm -hmm. From a recruiter's perspective, how are you able to identify within those digital profiles, right, the people that are agile? And then I guess like for those individuals, how do they portray themselves as being able to do? Like how can you actively hire for what is a pretty soft skill that is difficult to put down on paper? Yeah, that's that's kind of the magic question, right? <laughs> uh, and and I, I don't think it sticks to just recruiting, right? I think every hiring manager out there wants to figure out how to better assess the talent that's essentially going to be that profile for their organization to be mm -hmm. sticky and successful. Yeah. And um, 
and I know for me, I've thought, you know, I've been rethinking my own approach, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we get really stuck in the old ways of doing things right. And, you know, um, I'm a believer that behavioral interviewing has, has value. I'm a believer of assessments and all those things, but I think it's really, uh, you almost have to start defining what's driving the best results. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, uh, within our talent acquisition organization, uh, there are certain things that we want to see, behaviors. Um, and so we, we actually started doing uh, more situation-based um, yeah. interviewing where it was kind of like, all right, here's the situation and we're going to role play and, you know, I want to see how you react. And I, and I think a lot of organizations are kind of taking that approach if it's a customer facing type role. Um, and then on the other hand, you know, I think there's uh, the situations where it's not customer facing and you still need them to be agile and it's kind of probably leveraging assessments in a different way sure. or maybe even the behavioral interviewing approach. So I, I think there's not one single right answer yeah. on that selection process. I think it's, um, it's a constant refining approach. Um, and this is part of the agility, right? You know, yep. it's, it's figuring out, uh, what isn't working anymore and kind of shifting and pivoting to uh, a new direction so that you can figure out what's going to kind of achieve the results that you need, um, as a next step. Yeah. We have to be agile as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay. Well, I, I, honestly, we're, we're coming up on the end of our time together, which is unfortunate because this has been really fun. Um, but uh, I've really enjoyed the time. Uh, phenomenal chat. And uh, I guess, are you guys looking forward to anything else specifically at Recruiting Automation Summit? Any other conversations, any other sessions before, uh, before the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. There's, it's been really great networking. Uh, I think I was surprised at the presence of the diversity and inclusion topic awesome. uh, surfacing, mm -hmm. um, as heavy as it has, but it's so relevant right now. And sure. I think everyone has the right intentions and desires to do the right thing. It's just we're all trying to figure out what's the right and sensitive and, mm -hmm. you know, all these different components, what's the right way to address it. Um, but it's been good conversation, and I think uh, I'm always reminded at these um, uh, these types of events that, you know, we're not alone. You know, Schneider hasn't figured it out. I, LaDonna, have not figured it out. Yep. And I'm in a room of colleagues who haven't figured it out either, but this is where uh, kind of collective intelligence comes in and um, where maybe an idea I provide or an idea I hear uh, can actually be something that helps us move uh, the function forward. So. I love it. Well, uh, I know this conversation has helped me move forward a little bit. So uh, thank you both so much for joining. Uh, and until the next time, thanks for coming on. Thank, thank you. you.